clocked chamber. Clock chamber is another way to detect the presence of uh, radioactive emissions. Now, just now, if you use electroscope, you can only detect alpha, okay? Uh, beta, gamma, you cannot detect. If you use a GM tube, you can detect all alpha, beta, gamma, and you can count how many emissions. But the problem is you don't know whether it's alpha, or beta, or gamma, okay? Like, for example, you point to the rock, and then you get the reading 200s, okay? But you don't know the 200s is alpha, beta, or gamma. So you can't tell. Uh, GM tube can detect the number of emissions per minute, but you can't tell whether it's alpha, beta, or gamma. If you want to know whether the emission is alpha, beta, or gamma, or, or alpha, beta, above, or uh, beta, gamma, okay, together, uh, then you have to use clocked chamber. Because this clock chamber can be used to, uh, can be used to identify, okay, uh, whether it's alpha, beta, or gamma. Okay, how we work? Now, we have a box. Okay, we have a box, and uh, at the lower part of this box, we put dry ice. Okay, and then uh, below the dry ice, we have this sponge. Okay, or foam. This is to support the dry ice. To press the dry dry ice closer to this uh, the bottom here, okay. The functions of the dry ice is to cool down the air here, okay. It's to cool down the air here to a very low temperature. The melting point of dry ice, uh, actually, this is a condensation point, okay. Because the dry ice, it will straight away condense to become carbon dioxide gas. Uh. The condensation point is a negative seventy-eight point five degrees Celsius. So it means it's very cold. Eh? It's very cold. Uh, so it can cool down the air here quickly, right? To make the air inside here very, very cold. Okay. At the corner here, these two corners, we have felt ring soak in alcohol. Okay. So this felt ring soak in alcohol, and then it will release alcohol vapor. It will release alcohol vapors into the box because the temperature is very very cold eh? okay so after the alcohol is uh, evaporates and released to the chambers okay um, this alcohol at the very very low temperatures this alcohol can form this uh, alcohol droplets liquid droplets eh? easily okay it can it can form the alcohol droplets easily because the temperature is very very low okay and uh, the alcohol is almost saturated. So inside this box, uh, there is alcohol vapor condenser, and it will uh, form droplets at any times. It's very saturated, very, very low temperature. So this alcohol can form these uh, liquid droplets at any times. And then we have this uh, radioactive source, okay? So if you put the radioactive source inside, okay? And if there is radioactive emissions, straight away okay the alcohol will form the uh, liquid droplets it will form a droplets and then so there's a lamp here okay shine on the droplets and then there is a plastic lid here so that you can observe from uh, above uh, it's transparent so if, if you observe from above uh, then you can see okay then you can see the track of this uh, alcohol droplets because when there's a radioactive emissions, uh, it will form a track of this uh, alcohol droplets. Uh. And uh, because with, with the help of the lamp, then you can see the track of the alcohol droplets easily. Uh, and then you can see the radiations. Uh. You can see the radiations. Now, how to identify? If you see a thick track like this, a straight, straight and thick uh, this uh, track, uh, thick and straight with the occasional deflections if an alpha particles collide with the A molecules uh, uh, then it's alpha now why is it thick? because it has high ionizing power Okay, high ionizing power it can ionize a lot of air and then form a lot of this uh, alcohol droplets so it's very thick and then it's straight is because the mass of alpha particle is very high Okay, so it can hardly deflected by other molecules Okay. Uh, other molecules can hardly deflect it, so it's usually move in a straight line. But occasionally, it will deflect it by uh, the air. Okay, so if you see a straight 
track like this, then it's alpha. But if you see the track is, uh, uh, I think this one should be thin. Shouldn't it be, shouldn't it be thick. Thin. Something wrong here, okay? So for beta particles, uh, it's thin. And then uh, it, doesn't, it does not move in a straight line. It's deflected like that. Th that is because uh, this beta particle is electron very small, okay? When it collides with air, okay, it will be deflected. So it moves in this way. So it moves in random directions. Uh. So uh, if you see something like this, then it's uh, beta particles. Uh. Beta particles. If you see something like this, okay, it's thin, and then it's not connected. This one is still connected. The track is still connected, okay, continuous. But if you see something like this, okay, uh, then it's a gamma ray. So by seeing the patterns of the track form, uh, then you can identify whether it's alpha, beta, or gamma. Alpha, beta, or gamma. So that's how we uh, identify alpha, beta, gamma emissions uh, in this uh, cloud chamber. Spark chamber. Spark chamber. Uh, this spark chamber can be used to detect alpha only. Eh? Alpha only. How it work? Now you see there is two electrodes as well. Okay, yeah. Uh, one is positive. Okay, thin wire, and then this wire gauge negative, and uh, this is connected to high voltage supply. Eh? High voltage supply. It can be a few thousand volt. Eh? It can be a few thousand volt. If there is a radioactive source. Okay, alpha source. Uh, these alpha particles it go into the this a uh, this a spark chambers. Then it will ionize the air. It will ionize the air here. So after it ionize the air, then we have a positive and a negative charge. Okay, positive and negative charge. So we have negative charge. So the the positive charge will go to the negative terminal and the negative charge will go to the positive terminal now here I just draw three positive and three negative actually there are millions and millions of charged particles eh? and because this is connected to high voltage so this charge it will move very fast it will move very fast and when they move the negative particles move down and the positive particles move up at a very high speed, they may collide with each other, and if they collide with each other, they will produce spark. Then you can see spark formed. Okay, you can see this uh, spark. Okay, the spark forms. Every emission is uh, it will produce a spark. Okay, okay, you 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 will hear the sound zk zk zk. Okay, you can see the spark, and then you can hear the sound. Okay. So then you can count the how many emissions. So you can count by by counting the number of spark produced in one minute, huh? Okay. Uh, then, then, uh, then you will know how high is the 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 rate of radioactive emissions. But this one can only use to detect alpha or near eh? alpha or near, eh? uh, because the others like a uh, beta and gamma, the ionizing effect is too low, so it's not high enough to produce spark. So it can be used to detect alpha particles only. Eh?